Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to Interstitial Lung Disease Info. In this episode, I'd like to talk about a very rare condition, which is called Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And well, the name is in the title, so hopefully that helps. Uh, previously, this may have been called histiocytosis X, but uh, the current name is Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So this is a condition that generally affects people who have smoked. And it's classed as part of the interstitial lung diseases spectrum because it does affect the, uh, the tissue of the lung. So it's a condition in which there are these cells, Langerhans cells, right? These Langerhans cell histiocytes, which can accumulate in various organs. And we talk about pulmonary Langerhans cell histiocytosis or LCH when these cells accumulate in the airways. What it does, it, it leads to a cystic lung disease. What does this mean? It means that there are there is an accumulation of small little cavities that develop in the lungs over time in people who have this condition. So it can affect smokers in most situations, so about 95%. So most people actually who get diagnosed with LCH or Langerhans cell histiocytosis are smokers. It can include people who smoke cannabis as well, because that is sometimes considered the more rough type of smoking, let's just say. It is often generally limited to the lungs, but in some cases it can affect some other tissues of the body, such as bones, and it can lead so, to some lesions in certain bones, skin, or sometimes the pituitary gland. So this is a gland within uh, the, the head, basically in the brain, that can control sometimes how we uh, retain fluid in the body. So it, this is obviously a rare condition. Most of the times, like I said, it affects the lungs. Um, and it can occur in young people. So the peak age group would be maybe between the ages of 20 to 40. This is when it's diagnosed. Uh, but it, people can have this label, this condition, for a very long time. And it can affect both men and women. Now, these Langerhans cell histiocytes, so these are a type of cells that if you would read a pathology report, maybe from a biopsy, for example, they may be stained with some cell markers. Now, these cell markers are usually called CD1A and CD207. Now, this is not that important to, to remember, I think, if you're a patient or, you know, just a carer of someone who has uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, but it's just something that can be uh, relevant to your doctors when they are diagnosis, this, diagnosing these conditions. Now, it's very unclear how smoking leads to the development of uh, uh, this condition and how these cells basically proliferate, so multiply and accumulate in the lung. So it's not entirely clear how this happens, but basically they tend to pool together around the, the little bronchioles or the little tubes that lead down into the lungs carrying air. And it causes a type of granuloma. This is a type of inflammation in which basically the cells coalesce in, in, in little pockets, let's just say. And as they progress, as these lesions progress, these granulomas uh, le granulomatous lesions progress, it can lead to the destruction of the little walls in the tubes that carry the air to the lungs, which can lead to a dilatation or an opening up of the inner structure of that airway. So they can just build into little cysts. These are just like cavities, small little cavities. And over time, these can fibrose, they can become scarred, or they can enlarge. The several cysts from adjoining airways can pull together and create this uh, type of picture that we see on a CT scan of lung cysts or little lung cavities distributed throughout the lungs. Now, of course, there are clinical features to this condition, which are unfortunately non-specific, so it's very hard to say with certainty that someone has uh, Langerhans cell histiocell, sorry, Langerhans cell histiocytosis just based on symptoms, because as in most respiratory conditions, people may get some breathlessness, some cough which can be progressive as the condition worsens. Now, occasionally, some people who have this condition can develop collapsed lungs if a cyst, uh, a small cavity in the lung, reaches the pleural surface. So that's the outer lining of the lungs because the lungs are not tethered to the chest wall. So basically, the lungs themselves 
just have a membrane around them. And on the outer side of the lung, there is another membrane. And these two membranes have a little bit of fluid in between them, and they just stick together that way. And this is how the lungs move within the chest cavity. So it's the same principle as if you've got a, a little bag, a plastic bag, and <laughs> there's a little bit of fluid inside, and it's very hard to open up because the fluid tension just keeps the two uh, membranes together. This is what happens in the pleura. So you can get sometimes collapsed lung in cases where Langerhans cell histiocytosis is present as these cysts uh, reach the pleural surface. So it's not okay often that this happens, but it can happen. So it's something that you know patients should be aware of. And once a collapsed lung has happened, it may happen again, so it can recur. There are maybe some other features in... Uh, in, uh, in some patients. So people may feel um, a little bit unwell. They may have just generalized malaise. They may have a temperature sometimes, weight loss, sweats. So it's it can be very nonspecific. And usually the diagnosis requires at least a chest CT scan of high resolution. So high resolution chest CT or HRCT to diagnose the presence of these cysts in a specific distribution and in the right clinical context. So generally a person who is an active smoker and has these cysts and is of the right age, so generally in middle age. So of course, I mentioned before that it's not only in the lungs, uh, it's not only the lungs that can be affected. So sometimes bones can be affected with some, uh, we call them osteolytic lesions. So basically these cells can accumulate in bone tissue and it can lead to a destruction of the bone tissue, or thinning out. So you can sometimes get these things which uh, can potentially occur in the ribs and can cause some pain. And like I said before, it can affect the pituitary gland, which is sometimes responsible for how much water we retain. So it's interesting because some patients may develop something called another condition called diabetes insipidus. This is where it's not diabetes related to sugar levels, but it's just related to how we retain uh, fluid in the body but it can manifest itself with similar symptoms, so such as drinking a lot of fluid and just excreting, urinating a lot of fluid. And sometimes there can be some skin lesions, but most of the time it's a condition that's res reserved for the lungs, it affects the lungs. Now, what happens when your doctor does a workup for Langerhans cell histiocytosis? They generally look at the chest CT scan. So this is basically a cross-sectional imaging. So it's if you imagine slices through the lung, we're, when we're looking at a CT scan, we're just going up and down, scrolling up and down through the chest. And we see these little cavities uh, spread out throughout the, the lungs. And initially, you may have these little nodules that can then disappear and they can sometimes cavitate, so turn into little cavities, which then may have a thick wall around them sometimes and then progress to thinner walls and then some of these cavities can merge with each other or coalesce and then this is become we say confluent so you can have larger cysts and smaller cysts and sometimes as the condition progresses it may resemble another more frequent condition called emphysema so sometimes people who have longer hand cell histiocytosis may be diagnosed with emphysema rather than Langerhans cell histiocytosis because emphysema is a lot more common and it's a condition in which on a CT scan we will see areas of thinning out of the lungs or areas that look cavitary. So sometimes emphysema can look the same and it's also possible that you may have both LCH or Langerhans cell histiocytosis and emphysema in the same patient because they are both conditions associated with smoking but there are slightly different processes that lead to this. Sometimes, uh, as part of the workup, uh, your doctor may recommend doing a PET scan, a positron emission tomography scan. And this is something where we can pick up areas that are metabolically active, so areas of the body that sort of uh, absorb a, um, a marker that has been labeled with a radioactive nucleo nucleotide. So basically, it just brightens up when we do a scan because it goes to these tissues where there's high cell turnover. So sometimes that can help us figure out whether there is fixation of this marker in the lungs or in other areas of the body, like I mentioned before, where we're looking from for other places that may be affected, such as the skin, the bones, etc. So this can be interesting. So there are a lot of differential diagnoses when we see these cysts. So like I was mentioning before, it could just be a case of emphysema that looks like uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. So this is basically other conditions can look the same. This is what I'm trying to say here. There is another condition called Sjogren's disease, which is an autoimmune condition. And it can also present with the cystic lesions within the lungs. And then maybe some other things.
Now, usually when we make the diagnosis, it can be done just on CT scan in the majority of cases because doing lung biopsies and taking samples of the lung is actually becoming rarer and rarer these days because there is always a risk of complications. Now, generally, it is, uh, there are some radiological features such as these cysts that are, have a specific distribution. They may spare the, the bases of the lungs, so the cysts may not be there. So there could be a lot of things that may make us wonder whether this looks like uh, Langerhans cell histiocytosis. And basically the radiologist would advise, with, uh, would advise the, uh, the clinician, the pulmonologist, the respiratory doctor, whether it looks like uh, this potential condition, whether the clinical context fits. Now, generally, what the good news is regarding this condition is that basically probably half the patients or more can improve if they quit smoking. So it's a smoking associated interstitial lung disease, if we could call it that. And generally, if uh, smoking is sustained for a long period of time, um, actually patients do fairly well in the majority of cases, but follow-up is still warranted. So even if the condition improves or becomes stable, Probably it's important to just keep an eye on things, maybe having regular lung function testing done, having regular checkups with your doctor, just to see whether anything else has happened because other complications can happen as well. So people may develop, like I said, uh, a collapsed lung. At some point, they may develop a condition called pulmonary hypertension in some instances where the pressures between the right side of the heart and the lungs and the artery connecting the two can increase and it can lead to a lot of breathlessness that suddenly is out of proportion with the severity of the disease on the lungs. When we look at a scan. So your doctor will look at all these things and try to monitor and give you the best uh, solutions in your case. Now, hopefully this was uh, helpful. Uh, just to, to let you know that, obviously, I, I didn't mention there are some potential treatments that can be considered because it's an accumulation of these cells. Sometimes chemotherapy can be considered. Now, Langerhans cell histiocytosis is not generally considered a form of cancer. So I, I hope this reassures some of the people who are wondering that, wondering about that. But sometimes these cells can behave a bit more aggressively. So in those instances, maybe your doctor will advise more uh, serious treatments, more strong treatments, just to try to, to kill off some of these cells, basically, and try to limit the progression of the disease. But I would say in the majority of cases, that's not required. And in the most situations, just stopping smoking and, you know, just adopting a healthy living, etc., will probably stabilize the condition. So... It's something that's interesting. It's a rare condition, rare, rare to find, but it, it exists. And I thought I'd make a little video just to outline some of the basics about this condition. And I hope you found this helpful. And if you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you in future videos. All the best. Good health.